Relative volume, often called RVOL, is an indicator that compares current trading volume to the average volume over a given period. This will then be displayed as a ratio so we can quickly see how active a stock is trading today in comparison to its average. Today, we'll quickly go over how the RVOL is actually calculated, how to load a custom script inside of Thinkorswim in order to actually view it, and a general review of how it can actually be implemented into your trading. Now, beginning with the actual calculation itself, you'll actually find that the relative volume is actually incredibly straightforward. We're simply going to take the current volume and divide it by the average volume over the period that we have selected. For my indicator, I'll be using the average trading volume over the past 50 days. Looking here at a very quick example, let's say XYZ stock average trading volume over the past 50 days has been 1 million shares a day. Today's trading volume, on the other hand, is already at 1.5 million. Taking our calculation and dividing the current volume of 1.5 million by the average of 1 million, our relative volume would come out to 1.5, quickly telling us that the volume today is 1.5 times the average. But I think you guys get the idea, a value of 1 would indicate that the current volume today is right on par for the average, whereas a value greater than 1 would mean the current trading volume is greater than the average, a value less than 1 would mean the volume today is less than the average. But now that we've got a good idea of how relative volume is actually calculated, let's next go over the process of adding the script into Thinkorswim. In order to find the script that I'll be using in today's video, all you have to do is look down below in the comment section and find my pinned comment. In there, I'll be posting the script that you'll simply need to find and copy. Once you actually have the script copied, we'll next come back over to the Thinkorswim platform and specifically to the watchlist section on the left hand side. Looking in the top right hand corner of my watchlist, you can see a little gear icon, which is actually the settings menu. We're going to go ahead and select that. We're then going to go ahead and select customize, which is actually going to bring in a customization window. This is where you guys can add additional columns to your watchlist, but in our case, we need to make a brand new one. So what we actually need to do is come over here to the look up a column box and actually find a custom column, one that has not been edited yet. In my case, you can see the very first one down below is custom one. So we'll go ahead and grab that one and use it by clicking on the little script icon on the left hand side. Now, as soon as we click on that, a little pop up window will come up and let me go ahead and move that so you guys can see it a little bit better. From here, the very first thing we need to do is actually delete out the script that is already in here. In this case, it's just the simple moving average script. So let's go ahead and delete that. The next thing we're going to do is come up here and rename this column. In my case, I'm just going to name it Arval. Now that we've got it renamed, we'll simply come down here to the Think Script Editor. And now I'm just going to click in this empty box right here and paste in the script that we just copied. So right here I right clicked and I'm just going to go ahead and hit paste. Now in that box there, you can see the script that we just copied from my pinned comment. And now that I'm happy with it, everything looks right. You can see here it's using the 50 period moving average. What I'm going to do is come down here and select OK and hit OK one more time. Now I did get a little bit ahead of myself. I actually closed out the customization window. So what I need to do is come back up here to customize again. And now what I'm going to do is actually come up here to the look up a column box and find Arval, the script that we just loaded in here. So right here, you can see the script that we just created. Again, we named it Arval. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit add item down below. So looking here on the right hand side, we can see it has been added. And now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. So now what we've essentially done is added an additional column and this one specifically for relative volume. Looking here, we can see the current relative volume for Apple is just 0.93. So it's not quite as active as its average. However, right below that, we can see the relative volume for Airbnb is actually 1.6, which means today it's trading 1.6 times its 50 period average. Now, another thing we could do is actually sort this column by relative volume if we wanted to see the most active companies first. So let's go ahead and click on that and then click on it one more time. Looking here, we can now see that Palantir is on track to do 3.3 times its average. Below that, Coinbase also pretty active 2.6 times its average and then Airbnb at 1.6 times. But now that we actually have the RVOL script added to our watch list, now we can actually quickly determine whether the volume today is higher or lower than usual and potentially see how committed traders are to the price move. In general, a higher relative volume means a level of commitment to the price move and the trend is likely to continue. If relative volume is lower than average, it may reflect a lack of commitment to the move and could indicate a potential reversal or a new trading range. Now, in simple terms, that just means that if there is a big move on low volume, that move might not be justified and we might see it retract back up. On the other hand, if we saw a big down move with relatively high volume, that could mean we are now going into a downtrend. Now, it could also be used to determine if a recent price move actually has staying power. For example, a pullback with relatively low volume could mean a simple pullback. 
whereas a pullback with high relative volume could mean the beginning of a downtrend. But I think you guys see all of the potential uses of this indicator. After today, you should all feel comfortable in the general uses of it and how to add the indicator to the Thinkorswim platform. If you guys have any additional questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on relative volume. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.